Hi and welcome back to Black Belt Secrets. Today's video is for the child in you, so stay tuned. So a lot of you may know that I have a lot of hobbies and one of them is building quadcopters, hexacopters or drones as they may be called. I had put these on another channel called Airborne Filming but I've decided to collaborate everything into one channel so that I'm going to build this channel into a much wider remit of things that might interest you. So take a look, see what you think, please leave me any comments and thoughts in the comments box below. Enjoy! Hi and welcome to Airborne Filming. This is a brand new channel because I decided that along with a new hobby of mine to create, uh, build and fly hexacopters, I thought I'd create a channel to document the journey to help others as well. I've built other models in the past but not hexacopters. So this is the DJI F550 with the NASA V2. So this is the unboxing exactly as it's arrived from Build Your Own Drone. So I'll put the link and the description and the pricing in the box below. So as you can see I'm unboxing here, uh, it came with the legs, so they're just basic uh, legs for it to stand on. And actually a lot smaller box than I expected, so they fit quite snugly into here. I had to buy a new transmitter because I'd sold all my previous ones from when I built them years ago. So the DJI itself was a lot smaller box than I expected, so all of the parts obviously quite compact inside the box. So I'm going to open that up and take a look. So as you can see the NASA was in a separate box uh, in the orange box to the left. Uh, also quite compact, very small box, but I'm going to leave that aside until I've actually built the aircraft because uh, I won't need to put it on until then. So very secure box and as you can see when I open up everything's packed in a static bag or what I presume to be a static bag to prevent any interference because they're electrical components. So uh, obviously very sensitive to uh, static and electricity, so each packed in their own little bag. Very neat packaging, everything's uh, quite tightly packed together. So I'm just counting out each component here. We've got the ESCs. For those of you who don't know what they are, they just control the speed of the motors so that they're obviously spinning at the correct speed according to your transmitter or the GPS which is controlling it. The uh, rotor blades actually looked uh, looked and felt a little bit flimsy to what I expected, but later on I figured that uh, that actually helps because um, if they do hit something they're less likely to break. So don't worry about those looking a little bit flimsy or whatever. Um, some you might straight away think of uh, aftermarket up upgraded ones, but these actually do just fine. And if they do hit something it's great for beginners because they don't break so easily as I have with helicopters in the past. Uh, picking out the legs as well, uh, the red legs will serve to be the front. Uh, this packet here to hold the LiPo one as a Velcro strap. And of course the top and bottom plates with all the screws. Now there's two types of screws that come with it um, which are quite self-explanatory. One of them there's more of to attach the legs to the top and bottom plates and the others are to attach the motors. So you'll see which ones are which when you come to fixing them in because they one fit better than the other. Unboxing the transmitter, very neat design, uh, metallic, gunmetal like finish to it. It feels very sturdy, feels high quality so for a beginner stroke intermediate in this hobby field actually I think it offers very good value for money without being too expensive. Good display, good size display and um, very nice and bright as well, well contrasted and fits very well in the hands. So when it comes to actually building it I like to do it on a rubber mat because uh, it just feels comfortable to sit with a rubber mat so I don't burn anything underneath and I actually count out the items that we have so I'm just lining everything up here just as a uh, precautionary measure to make sure there is everything in the box because otherwise you need to call up and get the replacement but uh, I think it's unlikely to be anything missing so quite obviously you'll need six legs so therefore you have six motors six speed controllers um, you'll actually get a extra pair of uh, rotor blades or at least I got an extra pair of rotor blades to go with it presumably they uh, expect you to crash it when you first take off so that's uh, reassuring that you get an extra pair of those Interesting note to 
point out right now is that you can see from the rotor blades some are silver some are black that's because they obviously spin clockwise and counterclockwise uh, if you didn't realize it beforehand they will alternate from clockwise to counterclockwise and you need to use the appropriate uh, colored rotor blade to that effect uh, which I'll explain more about later also recommend you get some diamond clip cutters you can usually use the blade on pliers but I find these work better also get yourself some decent glue I use Gorilla Glue because it hardens to a very firm paste but you can also break it off if necessary this is used for the screws and for various other bits and pieces I also use heat shrink tubing 5 or 7 mil and some nylon zip ties for my soldering iron I use a Dremel, it's a VersaTip, so it's got six different pieces so you can use it for the heat shrink tubing because it's got a heat deflector, it's also got various shaped soldering tips as well which make it very useful for close up work or putting big blobs on when you're preparing the board for example. It also comes with a heat protective case so that you can put it back in the box and it will cool down naturally. So onto the build itself and obviously watch each section as much as you need to. Now whilst the motors are all the same, it's worth laying the legs, the motors and the propellers out in situ just to make sure that the motor attaches nicely to the propeller because I've had one or two motors that don't attach properly to the propeller and I've had to swap them around. So you're going to lay them out as shown here. The red will serve to be the front and the propellers as of the current build are color coded black and silver so you can see on the left you've got the black one is going to be the clockwise because it will tighten when the motor turns clockwise because the motor will tighten in the opposite direction so the motor direction needs to match that of the diagram that shows loosen on the propeller because obviously the propeller will tighten in the opposite direction because they're self-tightening propellers then obviously the silver marked propellers are going to go on counterclockwise motors because they will also tighten against the propeller. So just so you can see the finished result, the left red leg will have the black tipped propeller and the right will have the silver tipped. And the rest of the motors will alternate all the way around. So now you'll take the legs one by one and you can clearly see the four holes where the motor is going to attach here and the wires of the motor are going to fit through one of the holes on the legs of the arm. Now I've put them all through the same hole and um, put one through first and then the others go through after and they'll all fit through quite snugly. It's worth remembering that uh, each of these will be connecting to the speed controller and you might need to swap them around because if the motor is spinning the wrong way you swap any two wires to make it spin the way that you need it to. So you can see that the wires go quite snugly through one of these holes here. I did try to see what it would be like through multiple holes but uh, generally it feels better going through the one. Picking the screws is relatively easy, there are fewer and they are larger so the larger screws are going to go through the legs into the motor. Now because we're going to use some glue to prevent the screws from coming out with the vibrations what I decided to do uh, just to make doubly sure that everything is in square and properly is I used one screw to hold it in place first while I used glue on the other screws. So you're going to need a hexa screwdriver which come in any sort of hobby screwdriver kit they're very cheap four or five pounds so I put one screw in first so now that you can see I've put some of the Gorilla Glue on the screw just so that's going to stop vibrations and the screws coming loose and I'm going to attach the remaining three screws to the motor and then finally I'm going to take the initial one out and I'm going to glue that as well Obviously you're going to repeat this with each leg, choosing the appropriate motor as you did earlier, hopefully laying them out in situ. And you can see the hole here where two of them will go through easily together and then I put the remaining wire through just because the plugs don't allow them to all go through at the same time. But this also means that they're quite snug once they're in, but they're not too tight that it's going to damage the wires. Once again I decided to sit it in place first and secure it with one screw before putting the others in with some Gorilla glue. 
you only need a tiny amount of Gorilla Glue and this glue is particularly good because it does harden to a, quite a hard paste but you can also break the bond if you need to with a little bit of force and then you can clean it off and reuse the screw. Unlike most super glue then you probably won't be able to use it again at all. Once you've worked your way through all the legs you should have a nice set of six legs with the motors attached in the same place, all quite snug and symmetrical. Now with the legs all prepared it's time to break out the top and bottom plates. Now it's quite easy to distinguish which one's the top and the bottom as the bottom one will have the plus and minus pads for soldering the power connections. Do make sure you have some flux ready, even if your solder has flux in it, this helps you to get excellent connections. Now what this does is it will get rid of any impurities by help burning them away and make sure that the connection is solid. Next we're going to solder the electronic speed controllers or ESCs to the bottom plate. Here they're being shown with the heat shrink tubing that I've applied, which is very cheap and it's optional. Now what this does, it holds the wires together by use of a heat gun like the one on the Dremel here or you can get specific heat guns designed for the job and what they do is when they heat the plastic it shrinks around the wires keeping them together so as you can see below the two wires are separate but if you put this over the top as you can see here it shrinks around the wire very tightly keeping the wires together I just find this is a neat solution and since it's very cheap I think it's well worth doing. But this is how they're going to look out of the box and as you can see the wires are far too long. The ESC is going to sit in the middle of the leg here attaching to the motor on the other end but you can see these wires are far too long because they only need to reach the plus and minus pads on the very edge of the board. So having spent hundreds of pounds on the kit, you might be a bit timid about cutting the wires but don't worry about that, just leave yourself enough so that you can uh, tin the bit of the end of the wires and prepare them and so on and you should be fine. I tend to leave them a little bit longer than I need just so that I, if I need to resolder them, recut them for any reason I've got a little bit extra to play with but as it is there is far too much as they come out of the box. So here you can see I've cut a piece of the heat shrink tubing or sleeving. This was a uh, seven millimeter. It's literally two pounds, two or two pounds fifty for about five meters. So it's well worth it. Now you can see here um, I've cut it to size for the power lead and the motor connector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the motor lead through first. I found that a wooden skewer helps it to go through and then I'm going to put the power lead through and uh, I'm not going to heat shrink it until I've got the solder connections ready. This way you can do all the soldering in one go and then all the heat shrink tubing in one go as well, just making a neat job of it all. So now once again you can see all the ESCs together with the heat shrink tubing all cut to size and ready to be soldered. So just to be absolutely clear about which pads we are soldering to, each of the legs have their own plus and minus power pads such as this one here and this one here. Now you can see this one in the middle is separate from all of the others. Now this is going to attach your battery and anything else that requires power. This will include the NASA and any gimbal or anything else that you choose to add afterwards. But for now we're only interested in these ones and there are six, one for each leg around the board. So since we're doing all the pads at once, take the flux and just apply a little bit of flux to each of the pads that you're going to use all the way around the board. It's not going to evaporate, but obviously don't put anything else on top of it. And we're going to work around the board and solder our connections to it. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to tin the pads, which means I'm going to apply some solder to each of the pads around the board, preparing to put the wires there. Now if you've not done soldering before, I suggest you practice before using the actual board because you don't want the soldering iron on the board any longer than necessary. So you get the soldering iron to temperature and what I'm doing is just making sure that I get a lump of solder on the pads neatly and evenly so that I've got somewhere to connect the wires to later. This is where the flux is also useful because it ensures that the solder sticks very well to the pad and gets rid of any impurities and uh, gives a good clean electrical connection between the pad, the solder and the wires that you attach later. So work your way around the board doing all of the other pads and uh, tidying up any that didn't go so neatly and then your board is going to be ready to attach the wires for the ESCs. 
While I'm all prepared, I'm also going to uh, tin the pads for the battery connections, although I'm not connecting that just yet, I'm going to do all of the ESCs first. So back to the ESCs for a moment. Uh, some of you may prefer to shrink the tubing if you've decided to use the tubing uh, before you attach them to the power board. Now this is the heat deflector tool that comes with the Dremel. Uh, equally you can use a heat gun but this is on a low setting because I don't want to burn the wires or melt the ESC or cause any damage. So the heat deflector tool just gently pushes the heat around the wire and you can see the wire shrinks to half its size and it will keep the wires still and neat. And the heat shrink tubing is also going to act as a bit of a protection uh, for the ESCs and all the other wiring in case there's any chafing on the edge of the board because the edge of the board is quite sharp so it just acts as an extra layer of protection just in case you do get any wearing there you can spot that before it actually damages the wires themselves which will be infinitely more difficult to replace. So whether or not you decided to use the heat shrink tubing, go ahead and solder the ESCs to the power board here, making sure you get the red lead to the positive pad and the black lead to the negative pad, and make sure you keep the motor lead out of the way. You don't need to put the legs on at this stage, we'll do that afterwards. So once you've soldered on all the ESCs, we'll turn it upside down to attach the arms. Now initially I used these white legs, which is great as a starter, but I later changed it for a different uh, landing skit which I'll explain later. Once you've attached all the arms I would suggest that you use some cable ties to hold still the ESCs to the legs as shown here. There's no harm in also connecting these to the motors at this point although you may need to swap some of the wires later but I'll explain that later as well. Initially I used one cable tie but I found that two offered better support for the ESC to stop it from moving around. These are extremely cheap, uh, £2.50 gets you 100 or so of them and they don't need to be very long. These are the three plugs into which you'll put the three leads from each of the motors but it doesn't matter which one goes in which at the moment as we might need to switch them around to orient the motor correctly clockwise or anti-clockwise and I'll show you a method of doing this as well. So let's go through some of the electronics that we're using on the F550. It might seem quite complex at first, but once you know what each item does, it's really not all that complicated, and hopefully you can understand it. So first of all, we're going to use the NASA V2, which is the second version of this NASA GPS system. So we're going to have an LED, which is going to give you a host of information about what's going on with the aircraft and the GPS. We have the PMU or power management unit, which effectively regulates power to the GPS system. And obviously the main NASA component, which is going to output controls to the motors via the G GPS signals and your transmitter receiver signals. So this is my receiver for the Futaba T8J, which connects very easily because it uses the S bus system, which means I don't need to connect each of the motors individually. I just connect one S bus component lead and this outputs all of the signals necessary that it gets from the transmitter, which is nice and easy connection. So to secure these onto the bottom plate, I bought a box of Velcro stick-on pads. Now you get some in the kit when it arrives, but I found that the extra ones have been quite valuable. I found that one long strip in the center allowed me to sit everything neatly side by side, making it quite easy to keep them tidy. Now, as for connecting all the electronics up, the only one that took any sort of effort was connecting the motors to the NASA. But as you can see here, the numbered motors one to six, and as long as you start with motor one, as you can see in the diagram, and work your way around two, three, four, five, and six, it's actually very straightforward. The plugs will only go in one way, and they go in fairly firmly. They didn't all seem to go in the same distance, but they do go in firmly and it's quite easy to do. And on the other side of the NASA, you're going to connect the LED to the socket that shows LED at the top there. And the EXP is going to the PMU. Now underneath and to the right, you're going to see X2 and X3. Now X3 goes to the NASA, which is labeled as X3. X2 is going to your S bus on the receiver to receive all the signals that you send to it. 
Optionally, I'm going to use a gimbal to hold a camera city underneath the aircraft. So this is the control unit for the H3 3D Zenboost gimbal. Relatively new and absolutely fantastic if you want to have still and smooth video footage from the aircraft. Very simple to connect. It will have just a power connection going to the main battery connection and a plug which will go into the NASA PMU. Finally, of course, the lid that connects it to the gimbal, but I'll be doing a separate video on this gimbal anyway. Once you've laid everything out inside, we're going to install the GPS antenna for the NASA. Ideally, this should be located as close to the center of gravity as possible. I found the round sticky pads are very strong and should be perfectly adequate, but I also used a cable tie just in case to make sure it stays still. Then I used some Gorilla Glue to attach the pole and the satellite because I can remove it should I need to. But do note that this arrow on the satellite must point to the nose of the aircraft, which is the direction that the aircraft will fly in. For the LiPo battery connection, I prefer to use XT60 connectors as they are quite strong. You can use others, but most new LiPos will come with this connection and they're only a couple of pounds for half a dozen. Once you've plugged the LED into the NASA, you need to mount this somewhere as well. Preferably on the undercarriage, somewhere that you can see it from pretty much any angle. So I decided to use this location. So that pretty much completes the build of the DJI F550. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching it and hopefully it's been helpful to you. The setup and testing I will be doing in another video. So hopefully you'll subscribe. And if you do have any questions or comments, please do leave them in the box and I will come back to you. Thank you for watching.